Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people and puppets, please let me introduce you to Wally Wackerman. Hey everyone. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. It's me, Wally. It's me, Wally Wackerman. It's me, Wally Wackerman. As you probably know by now, I am a puppet. Oh, he's a wacky man, but it's also like a really Jewish last name. I am Wally Wackerman. I am Jewish, and I am a puppet. However, I am not a Muppet. I admire and look up to them, and I wouldn't exist without the inspiration of their story body of work. They've got a new movie coming out. I figured I'd give it a review, as talking about established pop culture icons can also help one's popularity and view count. Only thing I might need to do to keep up my appearance is the occasional eyeball readjustment. Such is the life of a puppet crammed into a bag. Humans are clearly at the top of the food chain. And being a puppet, I depend on a human. Not crazy about it. Would like to be a little more independent. Number one, Wally Wackyman has a Twitter account. I read those tweets in his voice. It's like a puppet who's in, like invested in comic book continuity. It's not like Gonzo's the guy who goes to the local comic shop. He's a goofy, you know, a goof around dude saying pleasant things and being very happy. Play, do, and say. Everything nice today. Brings joy to the kids. Brings joy to my kids. I actually, I don't have any kids. But if I did, he would bring joy to those kids. We want to, you know, live in a peaceful world where everybody gets along, everyone has their place, and we can all do things together. I'm just a simple puppet trying to figure things out and make it in a human world. Every puppet has a human. This is the story of one human and his passion to create life. You know, sometimes I feel, yeah, I really can do this. Sometimes I think like, oh man, I'm nowhere near ready. It's the confidence that kind of weighs me down, the lack thereof, I guess, sometimes. I'd like to come to a point where I could know I'm good and that this really is worthwhile and that it's, you know, not some, you know, little hobby, but it is worthwhile pursuing completely to the ends that I want to. That's what I need to really fully believe in myself. Hi, my name is Zach Walliner, and I'm a puppeteer. Yeah. I want to earn it, you know, I want to prove I am good enough at something, and this is the thing that I want to be good enough at, that I have to be good enough at, and so I'm going for it. Oh, hi. My name is Wally Wackerman. Like Zach said, I am his very first homemade puppet. Yep, I know how this whole thing works. Mm -hmm. It's nice though, you know? Aside from living in a bag and rarely getting to come out. Sesame Street's holding a workshop for puppeteers over the age of 18. They're calling it a workshop, but at the same time, it's probably some talent scouting going on in the background. So it seems like the thing I've been waiting for. It's got to be no more than three minutes, show three to four minimum character voices, include a song, introduce it as yourself. Those are the basic guidelines. This is what I want to do, a creative career, you know, uh, entertaining, performing, making people happy, making people laugh. I don't know if I'd have any idea how to get into the puppetry business. It's not an easy thing where you just jump on, where you go, okay, well, I'm going to be a puppeteer and tomorrow I'm going to start working at the puppeteer company, you know? It's a tough field to break into. It's a tough field to stay into. It's Henson, and then there's everybody else. I need to have motivation, and that's what I'm going to work towards. You know, that's the high mark. That's, that's what everybody thinks of when they see, when people see puppets, they say Muppets. That term refers specifically to the characters owned by Disney, including Kermit, Piggy, Fozzie, Gonzo, and that whole crew, along with their, shall we say, cousins at the Jim Henson Company and Sesame Workshop. And I hear about how great it is there and that I grew up with it and it's New York. So let me go for that full on and that'll be the goal. At, at least with acting, there are auditions daily, all the time, everywhere. With puppetry, and there's this, there's this many people in the world that make a living doing it. So now today I just want to go for it, do it, get out of the way, get it off my mind. Just a monkey on my back, you know, I just want to get it out of the way and just, once I send it off, that's it, it's out of my hands and then 
you know, fingers crossed it, it gets, uh, you know, accepted and I get to go to this thing, you know. Three, two, one. This first reaction, he was nervous, but excited. I'm sorry, well, I'm gonna put the tear. Uh, there's only so much time, so let's get right down to it. He wants this opportunity so badly, but he doesn't want to fail. There's only so much time, so I'd like to get right down to it and introduce you to my puppets. Starting with my I like to yeah. I'm forgetting my lines. Three, two, one. I'm just so nervous. My brain is just thinking of all the worst possibilities, and it just—it has to be perfect. It's not gonna be perfect, but to me, it has to be perfect. I want to do it. I want to do it the best I can, but I'm often my own, uh, you know, harshest critic. Because I know what good hand and rod or hand and you know live hand puppetry is, if I'm not reaching those standards, then I'm just like, what am I doing wrong? Sometimes I can't see it from myself, you know, I'm just always judging and critical. Only need occasional uh, eyeball realignment to keep up my appearances, really. Oh, my head keeps sticking up. That's if they've been able to put things up. Ah, oh, damn, it was so good. Really only need a cable occasional eyeball readjust. Damn. I'm Zach's bad to do on it. In a few hours, I'll be behind a desk, you know, yeah. uh, helping stream market research online. But, you know, yeah. in the background, I'm following my dream. It's a little hard when, you know, you, it's know, hard, yeah. you have a full time, you know, day yeah. job to try to fit in time to work on the, um, the sort of career right. ambitions which are unrelated to the day job. You know, I'm not going to, you know, look to go forward in the company I'm working in as what I want to do with my life. If you are able to be successful at it, it's, it's the greatest job in the world. My dream goal would be to get a job on Sesame Street, you know, that, oh, really? that, you know, cause you know, that's the place to be really when it's in this field. I mean, there's only so many jobs for a puppet, you know, puppeteer. <sighs> that might have to be it. Yeah, that was it. All right. All righty, it's about 12.20 p.m. on October 1st, 2013, Tuesday, and I have here my email to Sesame Workshop. There's the attached file, the release. There's their email address, and uh, I've signed it. There's the link. It's done. Fingers crossed. All right, we'll see what happens. Bye bye. According to Walliner family lore, the first word Zach ever spoke was Ernie, the name of the orange half of Sesame Street's most famous duo. Zach's early childhood affinity for Bert, Ernie, and all the rest was encouraged by his parents, both educators, and shared with his two brothers. When, when he was very little, we called him Happy Rockefeller. That was his nickname because he always had a smile on his face. He was always very playful, so wanting to act out things and a lot of dramatic play. The teacher had said to me that he was making little figures that were talking on his desk to each other. I felt that he was puppeteering. Zachary was always, uh, he always followed his own drum. He, uh, even in Cub Scouts, if um, we were doing the Pinewood Derby, his car would, would have an elephant on it where everybody else is, you know, it looks like their fathers had made them. I think he's in his own category, but that's not, that's, that's the best thing ever. And here I am, but even though I'm different than all of you, we can still have a good time with each other. Because you know what? It's okay to be different. Even before I was big into puppetry, you know, I was always, you know, picked on as a, as a kid and in high school being an outsider, kind of being the odd ball, the odd one out. So I know what it's like for people to, you know, use words or even physicality to, you know, put you down. And I don't like that. I've always prided myself on being unique and, you know, individual and different. And I've, you know, worn it with, as a badge of honor. He always had in his possession something with the color purple. And he always took that one purple thing or another with him. For all of our children, we encourage them to be creative, to be individualists, to think out of the box, and to go with their passions. As Zach grew older, and the wacky boy became the wacky man, the Muppets faded into the background. Until college, when new action figures and DVDs reignited Zach's interest, just when he needed them the most, following the end of his first relationship. 
I just got back into it and there was a presence again of these characters and it reminded me of what I'd liked so much from my youth. It can lift you out of a bad day or a bad week or a bad feeling that's just kind of surrounding you. Mini studio for my animation projects. Zach channeled his rediscovered passion into creating homemade stop motion videos with his newly acquired Muppet figures. Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, here at Muppet Labs, where the future is being made today. For college, I went to SUNY Purchase, and I ended up getting a bachelor's degree in new media. My final project was a film with a monkey puppet that I had. We bought it on a family vacation in Florida. It's called Monkey Love. And that was my first real attempt at trying to do something in the vein of the Muppets, where I was filming and I was using a puppet in the film and keeping myself out of frame. The basic premise was that this monkey puppet character, in the film, he's, it's sort of vague. You can't tell at first because he only comes to life in front of my little brother. So my little brother's in there and it's supposed to be like sort of an imaginary friend, but he comes to life. Monkey, are you awake? Yeah, of course I'm awake. I've been awake the whole time. <laughs> I got you. And they talk and stuff. And then he sees a picture of my girlfriend at the time. And he just falls in love. And he just wants me out of the picture. And so then I use sort of fantasy sequences um, in there. Different things that, you know, were related to different pop culture things I liked at the time to, to get rid of me. And it was a fun project. And I really still uh, like it. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was very funny, very well done. And uh, that's probably when I thought that uh, he had a lot of talent in that area. After that, you know, I got more confident about doing puppetry because I had this experience from it and I was proud of it. And so that's when I looked into how to make a puppet of your own rather than just using some other person's puppet. You know, I was just, you know, fresh out of college and, you know, going, you know, getting a job here or there, but not, not really starting any kind of a career necessarily, but just, you know, having an income of some sort, but wanting to find my way in the creative field because that's where my heart is. Let's see what we've got in here. I started building this character and then I got the idea that maybe I could do children's birthday party shows. My dad wore a big white rabbit suit and he was called Amazing Alan the Magical Rabbit. Money was tight, so what happened was I started uh, doing magic shows for kids, which was a hobby of mine when I was like 12. You know, he would be in the audience. I would ask for a volunteer and he would come up and, and he would help me do the tricks. He loved it. He loved the attention, loved being in front of the group. Because the reason I was able to stay home was his dad was doing magic shows. Hey everybody, it's me, Wally Wackman, here with a very exciting special delivery that I got in the mail today. Let's check it out. It's Fleece! Oh look, it's so exciting. Let me really get into- Whoa! Whoa! I got a little carried away there. I fell in the box. But, uh... Yeah, very exciting because, like I said, this box is full of fleece. Brand new, sparkling white fleece. You know, it's not a racist thing. It's just white can be dyed any color. So this bag, this is the one that I think has a lot of the stuff. Puppet panel body pattern take two. I started building it and it took time because, you know, I kind of let things go. I'd start, I'd do a little building and then, you know, other stuff would get in the way. It was like it was a long process because there were like points where it kind of would slow down because I mean he has to work, he has to. There's so many other things to do. Chin take one. April eighth, two thousand six. It was a, an emerging project that 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 we could see by colors of things in the bathtub. About little, occasionally he would bring the little prototype out before it was actually something. You know, hey, ma, this is it. And so we were on the periphery of of it um, as it took a really long time to go through the process for him. My parents and Harry, my other brother, knew about it. Beyond that, I don't know that there was really anybody else to tell. In terms of sharing information, Zach tends to be rather to himself on ideas, part of it because he tends to run things around his head a lot before actually stepping in. He would start to say to me, I need to, you know, I need to get some materials. And he would ask for suggestions where to get some of the materials. Some loose Wally fleece. 
This is the, the packaging. This is where Wally's eyes came from. Chair pads, <laughs> that's the advertised intention use of them, and I'm using them to make puppets. Then I, you know, then he expressed to me it's about the puppet that he wanted to make. For guidance, Zach turned to an instruction manual called the Foam Book. Following the methods of the Foam Book and its companion VHS tapes, Zach employed foam and fleece to construct a three-piece head, body, and arms. Over the next two years, Zach built Wally using a simple but original character design and much trial and error. The original intended body of Wally. So yeah, there's four of these very large panels where I thought he'd have a wide body to accommodate the live hands looking natural. But, you know, I built it and then I put it on and just kind of did that. And I'm like, hmm, well, how do I keep it there? Wally was going to have yellow hair originally because yellow and purple are in contrasting sides of the color wheel. And I thought that would make for an interesting mix and colorful character. In the end, I decided that he can be hairless and he's turned out just fine without it. To challenge himself, Zach made Wally a live hands puppet. Instead of using like pieces of wood attached to little like fake hands, they were actually going to be his hands, which is not always the most common form of puppetry because you also, it's a puppet where you need to have at least a second person to have both hands in motion. Looking at this, it takes me back to when I was first doing the work on this and it's kind of cool to still have the original pieces. It's sort of just like a time capsule of the time spent building him and making him come to life. I think what happened was we started to hear another voice in the house. Uh, I guess it's kind of, because, it, yeah, it looks like a puppet. Big purple, it's got the two eyes, got a big sort of nose mouth situation. Could be a dinosaur, could be a frog. He's a guy. He's a puppet, he's a guy, he's purple, but he's just sort of a, a, a guy. He's not a creature of any one specific type or label. He's, he's a guy. Hey, how's it going? Shabby or not, he's Wally, and you know, a little rough around the edges, so to speak, but he's still Wally and he's still that one puppet, that one physical puppet will always be important to me. Hey everybody, it's me, Wally Wackerman. I'm here at the Courtyard Denton Marriott Hotel in Denton, Texas. Yeah, it's cool, we're here for a puppetry workshop. Not that I need it, but you know, human. Years later, Zach would attend a pair of workshops in Texas and Connecticut to hone his skills. Subsequently, he added three new additions to his stable of characters, though he has continued to perform almost exclusively with Wally. So, uh, I'm Bully. You might have heard of me. Just, uh, sort of a shy little guy. Not much going, though. Don't have too much personality. Because I got no nose, hair. What's it to you, huh, Mac? You got any cheese? Well, Zach stood out, actually. That was, the, that was the first workshop that Nolan and I taught together at the University of North Texas. And Zach stood out for this purple pillowcase. And for the first two or three days, Nolan and I didn't say anything about it, but Zach always had this purple pillowcase with him. Actually, it's an NYU laundry bag. And finally, Nolan got up the nerve. He's like, okay, I'll bite. What's in the, what's in the pillowcase? <laughs> and Zach explained that it was his puppet and that he didn't want to leave it in the hotel room because it was very personal, very special to him. He's a nice guy. He's a good kid. He's got this giant bag he carries around with him. People who know Wally know about the bag. On Twitter, on his profile, it's like, where are you from? And I think the bag is, is where his location is. That's the only Wally I have, and you know, I can't have anything happen to him. It's a little limiting, and it can be frustrating, because if I want to take a risk or have him do something different, I'm too afraid. Now might be the time that I would come in here and take a shower. But since I have fleece rather than skin, I could save it for the washing machine. You know, I don't even know how water would react. Like, if I wanted to, you know, have him, you know, taking a shower or, you know, or some something, I don't know, out of the blue, just picking up where he would be in water. Even that much, I'm just like, 
It makes me nervous. And his eyes need adjusting sometimes after he's been in the bag and moved around. They're not looking where they need to be. And eye focus is very important with puppets. They need to be having a place where they're looking. Whoa, his eyes are out of whack. They are way close together. So that you, where you move it, you know he's looking where he needs to look, whether it's in the camera or at something or someone. Not sure if I'm looking at you or what. My eyes are all wobbly and loose. I have to keep him very protected. I have him in that bag until he needs to come out. And when he's done, I put him back in that bag. That's his home. And also, it's almost sort of aids in the presentation of him when he does come to life to get that shift from not being seen. And then when he is seen, as as little time possible before he springs to life. You want to stick it on? Oh my God. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> I'm rolling. So, yeah. Oh, put him away for now. I don't want them to see him until oh, it's all ready. Oh, that's right. Remember, he's sleeping. What's in that bag comes to life when it's taken out of that bag, and that's a special transition. The day I met Wally and Zach. I met Zach first. So I'm at Comic-Con 2011. I'm at my table, and he asked if we knew Wally Wackerman. Oh, are you Wally Wackerman? I'm like, well... And then he reaches down, and he's got this giant bag. Take him out and put him on, and there he is. Because I could say, yes, I'm Wally Wackerman. But no, <laughs> you know, I have him right there with me. I'm like, well, I'm kind of, but he is. And then it's like, wow, you're revealing something. It's like, there he is. We're talking to this guy, and he goes into the voice. I can't explain it. We were talking to the puppet. We weren't talking to Zach. Like, we were making eye contact. As much as I knew, it's felt in foam. That for me is, a, you know, one of the highest compliments, I guess, really, is that it shows I'm doing a good job because the focus is where it's supposed to be. There's a crowd, like, oh my God, there's a puppet here. My favorite picture from that convention is a, fo a photo of Wally admiring this drawing of puppets. Before he was finished, I knew about him and who he'd be a little bit. Just as I, I made him purple because it's my favorite color. I had an idea I wanted him to be sort of a Jewish character. You know, not every character has to have a trait so distinct to the person who made it and who's going to perform it, but it was just, I thought, something different too. You don't really see much of characters who are Jewish. And he's not an over-the-top stereotype. He's not, you know, going out to nosh on some bagels or, or mocking at all, you know, what people think of. You know, I'm proud of my Jewish heritage. The voice is sort of like an old Jewish man. The, the, the words he uses, the sort of, his interactions with people. Are you okay? Can I get you anything? It's that kind of a rhythm to his voice. Hope you're having fun here on the East Coast. And if I don't get to see you, have a safe trip back home. Bye. Oh, dream, dream, dream. Oh, I'm I didn't know where that would go or how to use that in the setting of a kid's birthday party. <laughs> what, is, what does the goofy Jewish guy do to entertain the children? His first name is sort of derived from my last name. Eventually I came up with Wally Wackerman by combining wacky man. He's a wacky man and again that that, when pronounced in that way, sounds like a Jewish last name, Wackerman. Oh, how, how's that going? How's your character doing? It was just about figuring out what to do next with him. Well, that's a conundrum. A lot of evil characters never realize they're actually evil. Anytime I describe it to people, and I explain that there's this puppet that I know from a radio show, that's already the joke. Why is there a puppet on the radio? What's the point? Armed, literally, with Wally, Zack took an unlikely next step in his journey. He introduced Wally to the world through a medium most unusual for a puppet, radio. Shortly after building Wally, Zack called into The Best Show, a radio program broadcast on WFMU and hosted by Tom Sharpling. Zack, or rather Wally, would go on to become a regular caller, his personality developing and solidifying through these on-air appearances. Eventually, Wally even had the opportunity to occasionally co-host the show in studio. I wonder how much the best show steered Wally away from what Zack's intentions were versus what 
the show turned him into. Wally was this good-natured, affable puppet who just wanted to have a good time and, you know. Uh, and I think that the nature of the best show put Wally and Zack and the, the entire enterprise not on the defensive, but a little bit, because callers would call in and they'd be annoyed. Or they, they, the joke was, here's this goofball puppet. In the first call conversation, something is called out about like your ping pong eyes or something, and then he just kind of goes, actually, they're fishing bobbers. Because he's addressed as a puppet, because they're mentioning him being a puppet in the air, if I had him not know he was a puppet, he would have been like, why are you calling me a puppet? What's that? You know, Kermit the Frog is a frog, you know? <laughs> Kermit the Frog doesn't look at himself as a puppet. The best show thus gave rise to one of Wally's most identifying characteristics, self-awareness. You know what? Now that I think about it, I'm not really that hungry after all. I suppose it could be because I don't have an actual stomach. He wouldn't eat pig because he's Jewish, but also he wouldn't eat it because he's a puppet and he can't eat. I am called a puppet. You know, I don't have skin and bones like you kids do. I'm made of different materials, see? Like foam and fleece. You're aware of how this works, though. We all know, you know. Yes, yes. Oh, I, you know, I, if I haven't already made it clear through talking about it, I'm a self-aware puppet. I talked about being a puppet. I know I'm a puppet. I know I'm attached to the guy. I think I made it clear without, you know, using the word self-aware, but that's, that's the deal. Yeah, yeah, so he knows how it works, and even if he would rather be able to do it on his own. Wally is a character in character, but he's a character who happens to know the bigger picture that he's a puppet. So uh, I guess this is what you call puppet slam, is that correct? Yeah. 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 I'm glad uh, that it's uh, so easy going, because I thought that was a hate crime against my people. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds threatening. <laughs> what? Hey, uh, hey, listen, buddy, I, I don't want to alarm you, but uh -huh. you should know that there's a guy behind you with his hand up your ass. Okay, you know. All right, I'll play along. I'm well aware of it, actually. I'm, I'm kind of a self-aware puppet, and so I kind of know how the whole thing works. I try to ignore it. Well, he doesn't want to be a, a real boy. He wants to be a puppet, where puppet now means, in addition to what he is, it means almost like a species or a race, but a living one, and a living one who doesn't depend on someone else to give him that living presence, that life, that spark. Such is the life of a puppet crammed into a bag crammed into a bag. One day you have to do a video of Wally, and then he's like, I'd like to introduce you to my new friend, and it's him with his hand up another puppet. I've, I've thought about doing that. Like, like meta, meta Wally. It's like an extension of Zach as an artist. Like, a lot of the time, especially when he posts on like Twitter, like it's pretty, it's a lot of just like, oh hey, it's Zach as a puppet character. We're, we're, we're separate, but connected. I don't believe like Zach feels that he is part of the puppet or that the puppet is him. I'm not a crazy person. I can differentiate. I know this is the puppet and this is me. I can draw the line. There's, you know, there's differences. There's similarities because he comes from me. He's created by me, but there's differences too. And, you know, it's a character I'm performing just like any performer. It's like almost like Zach's like twin. <laughs> Zach's purple googly eyed twin. Sorry to interrupt. Um... This is Zach. Hey, hey, everyone. How you doing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Look, we we'll get to you. Well, I just I just wanted to chime in. Okay. Uh huh. What do you got to say? Go ahead. Get it out. Um, I'm Zach. My name is Zach Walliner. I'm I'm responsible for Wally. Well, well. Hold hold hold. I'm I'm my own guy. You know. But as far as a line between me and Wally, it's not like I don't know where I end and he begins. You got me, and baby, I got you. I want to find a way to succeed in, in the entertainment field and being creative and performing. And Wally is the means to that. Wally, you know, in his own world, wants to succeed in entertaining and performing and making people happy. So we're, we have the same goal. He wants to get along with people. He wants to make friends. He wants to meet people. He wants to know people. He wants to entertain people. When I bring happiness to others, it makes me happy. So I, you know, I want to 
make people smile and laugh and be happy. My people. Lots of good puppets. Puppets are good people, you know. Have you ever had a puppet? No? You know, seeing kids smile and laugh, you know, you know, just, you, how can you not have your heart warmed by bringing joy to children? They still have all that wonder in them, and you know, they can still be impressed and amazed where so many people nowadays, it's like, yeah, I've seen it, done it, you know, jaded. All right, well, nice talking to you two. Bye. You guys have a good rest of the day, okay? All right, bye. One of my favorite things about Zach is that he's not afraid of going up to people and with this character and just kind of talking. Like every Comic Con we went to, no matter how tired Zach gets, he always brings that bag. And anyway, put your puppet up. The puppet that you, that you always have all that time in your hand. You can put that one up too. Hello, Wally. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> nice to meet you. He's a performer who performs through a device. So as a person, he's reserved, he's quiet. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't want to get in anyone's way. He's got this puppet. Puppet is the, is, is the voice. Holy cow, Liz! What the? Hi, Wally. Hi. I'm Wally. Hi, Wally. I'm Wally. That's so rhyming. Yeah. This is great. What is, what is Wally doing for Zach? that Zach isn't doing on his own. For me, puppetry is a way that I can help get past you know, the weakness of being a little more shy or introverted because of what it allows in the performance and in the engagement. Interesting to hear Wally, and, and as all puppeteers, there's a different uh, like uh, persona that comes out. The way Zach is, Zach's a little more reserved, he's a little shy, you know. But Wally is just very opinionated. He has many sides that people may not ever see. So, for example, at his wedding, when he addressed the crowd about his wife, about his brothers, about his parents, and about the people that came to that wedding that really meant a lot to him, it was truly passion. He has a very outgoing side when he has a comfort level. Like when I went to the O'Neill Puppetry Conference, the first night they had a little, you know, they called it a, a puppetry slam, you know, kind of like a poetry slam. I got some encouragement. Some people there were like, well, you, know, you got something in that bag, huh? And you know, like go on, go up, and and you know, so I I went up. <laughs> there there was a good reaction. Hey everybody, how's it going? Oh, hi. Hey. hey. My name is Wally Wackerman, and this is a piece that I call "Just Made Up from the Top of His Head." <laughs> <laughs> so it's moments like those that remind me, like. Okay, I'm doing something right with this, and this, you know, I can I can do something with this. I I am good. <laughs> when I take him out of the bag and put him on, it it can be a little nerve wracking. Though most of the time, uh, it's an excited thing because I'm getting a chance to do something with him. I'm getting a chance to perform and play. Once he's on, I'm I'm focused on what I'm doing with him, so the other things can kind of slide away. Sometimes it's still you don't know what people are gonna think. <laughs> There's never any time where people don't react because it's unusual. You never just see a, a guy walking around with a puppet on his arm. If you know me, congratulations. You are one of the proud and few, um, but hopefully growing. As a result of Zach's experience with The Best Show, his career goals shifted from children's parties to the larger, more daunting world of film and television. All right, recording video. I am going to be taking part in a new documentary. Very exciting. It's called Wackaman, Rise of a Puppet. Hey, Wally. Huh? What are you doing talking? It's going to be called Wacky Man, Rise of a Puppeteer. What? That's preposterous. Why would anyone want to see that? These days, the web is, is the place to be. So, you know, yeah, I put a, a YouTube video of Wally here and there. And, uh, you know, Gets a few hundred hits. I'm here with another video. I've been making a few, quite a few now, and um, you know, they only go, get so many views. It's a little disheartening. If I were giving constructive criticism, and I'm not a film person at all, is a lot can be said for lighting and sound. While he's purple, can be purple. I've seen it in person. It doesn't look the same on that YouTube screen. I, I watched something of Zach's recently, and what struck me a lot was that his character was 
could have been a lot more expressive if you had played with the depth of field, you know, played, come up really close to the lens and then far away and, you know, just been able to move more instead of just being anchored in one spot. It gives it a much more dynamic performance. Right off the bat, I'll just tell you that I liked it a lot. It's a lot of fun. And beyond that, it really improves upon several aspects that the last film, 2011's The Muppets, missed the mark on. Comparing the two shows where this one especially shines. So let me start with that. If you have a puppet that's just reviewing something, um, it's just, it's a lot of talking. And it's tough to make a puppet interesting for long if it's just a lot of words. It begs the question, well, why isn't it just a person doing it? There has to be a reason it's a puppet. I'm very interested to see how people take this. I know this is kind of a boring episode. I'll, I'll admit it. I'm just talking about myself, talking in a mic. What do I do to get more views? Well, I looked around YouTube and I saw what kind of videos get more views. So one thing I found though was prank videos. Boom! <laughs> Hey everybody, it's me, Wally Wackerman. I just uh, been trying to find out the formula to have a successful YouTube video because uh, my prank video didn't exactly set the internet on fire. If you have that sort of small tool base and you can make something look good, which is really what it's about, like make something look professional, then you convince everybody that you're professional. In terms of the content, it might be interesting to see him interacting with things. I want to see how does Wally interact with other puppets? Because most of the time he's interacting with humans. But he'd have to put his mind to incorporating some other things and also incorporating other puppets. So if he was going to do that, he might need to make friends with other puppeteers, collaborate, and be flexible. It, is, it has been tough to try to figure out when and where and how to make stronger connections. And most every day I don't come across people who have that passion. And then, yeah, I've connected through Facebook. But everyone also has their own lives. Everyone's got their own lives and their own schedules. So if I could find more people to work with that uh, match my sensibilities and we could collaborate if those opportunities ever came up. And so far, you know, there hasn't really been much of that. And in not pursuing writing or not finding someone else to help write, there is a stop. There's a stop gap. There's something between doing it and not being able to get it done. There might be something to that, maybe writing some sketches, generating content, you know, telling stories with Wally instead of just Wally talking to the camera. So he'll just be like, hey everyone, it's Wally Wackham in here. Um, Winter 2015, prepare yourself. All right. Winter is all right. coming. All right. We don't need any of that. <laughs> Leave it to me, all right? <laughs> Zachary, uh, I think, has very clear ideas on, on how he wants to uh, film Wally, how he wants to perform with Wally. The content is one piece, and I've given him feedback on that, but he is a very sensitive person. And again, if he doesn't sort of keep moving, it's really, this is the really hard part for, for Zach, is to also to take advice. So he's gonna be like, hey everyone, it's Wally Wackerman. That's uh, boring. I'm, but that, I'm kidding, I'm busting your chops. <laughs> I don't need your chops busting in the video. When Zach's younger brother, Harry, moved to the West Coast to pursue his own creative ambitions, Zach and Wally both lost their right-hand man. On this day, however, Harry is home for a visit, and able to lend a hand once again. Maybe I'll play with that in the beginning before we get into the video. I'll say, I, I wanted to make a new video, and not just because I actually have two functioning arms for this one. And I'll be like, hey, give me five. <laughs> I have one hand, you know, your hand can slap the left hand five. Look! See, I got a moving right arm. Yeah, I'm gonna give myself a high five. All right. I wanna make use of your hand rather than just you having a solid hand. So you'd be like, hmm, you could watch, you know, a boring old story about an everyday dude trying to get his life together. Or, or a fun puppet. Hmm, <laughs> I knew we could do that where he's like, hmm, hmm. Got this over here, you got this over here. Hmm. Because you want to keep that realm of this is a uh, like a character, this is this is like a person rather than this is a guy with a, a guy's hand up his butt. You have to always like, work out like the technical aspects of how are we going to do this shot so that neither of us are be, are in it. It was always a hassle, but it was always hilarious looking back on it because it's like, well, I'm also trying to figure out how the shot looks. Once I like start recording and I move over and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be the tan and I'm like, oh, Zach, you're right here. I can't be here too. So what are we gonna do to make this work? Once he got married, Veronica was more helping him and I would kind of be more behind the camera on that. The eye focus is way off. I, 
Sorry to do this to you. Just sit nice and straight, don't let your you know, pants wrinkle against each other or anything. Just any movement could be picked up. So okay. You just gotta be careful, so. Oh, another cool thing about me, I've got live hands. So I'm gonna need you, when he says, I've got live hands, you watch my hand and make him go like this, and you know. Kids like me, and, and I got live hands. Ooh, yeah. Anything Zach needs help with, I will help him. So especially when it comes to his dreams. It's more, my arm gets sore, you know. You just gotta go. Okay. And so he can't just be sinking down. He's got to go in a straight line. Okay. Well, yeah. your, your arm has to move. As he moves, okay. your arm has to move. So your arm can't stay back here while he goes there. You see what I mean? Yeah. Dodie did a terrific job. Thank and you. hopefully he makes it. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, thanks. I appreciate the support. It always makes me feel better. He can do those older, like, the videos that cater to an older audience. But he also can do, the, like, the child's parties. Doing parties... Probably still on my mind, but it, it sort of took a back burner. Wally, at least, is someone who's intended for, you know, all ages. So, I don't know if I'd want to just do the kids' parties. One weekend out of every month. That's something. Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Yeah. Good. Good. It's nice to meet you all. So, I'll see you a little later, and he'll see you very soon. We can do what we want to do, say what we mean to say, but say it in a nice way, say it in a nice way. It's a better way to play, making new friends every day, when we do things nicely, making our points precisely. So play, do, and say everything nice today. Do you like that song? Yeah. It was all right. Oh, thank you. With YouTube, you could put up a video and maybe a couple people watch it, but like when you're in that cr live crowd, getting that live reaction, I think it's, it's, it's like an adrenaline rush. When I found out about this opportunity, I guess it was a mixed reaction in that it was both excitement and then nervousness. Because any time that I have to do something or have to be in front of people, as much as you know, comes with the territory of doing this sort of thing. There's the, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to fill that time? How am I going to make this meaningful? And, you know, that's when the, the kind of fear and self-doubt creeps in again. I don't have, like, a planned act, like, my go-to Wally. Let me do the one, you know, typical Wally bit for people who don't know Wally. Very cool, right? I like puppets for obvious reasons. <laughs> They're fun. You ever make a puppet yourself? Yeah, I need the origami one. Oh, cool. How'd it turn out? Good. Good. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Nicholas. Okay, cool. <laughs> Everyone's different. There's all sorts of different people. There's boys and girls, and people have looked different. And there's something very different about me. That's right, I'm purple. Do you know anyone else who's purple? No, probably not, because most people aren't purple. Yeah. Kids aren't. Yeah. We only have this one world, and we gotta share it with each other, right? Yeah. 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 You all know what it means to share. You can all shout out if you know what it means to share. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I don't think I came off amateurish, but yeah, I mean, I guess that was a little bit tricky because of how there were some some you know mixed issues there where you know I lost control of the crowd a little with the, you know asking questions and them kind of going all over the place. Does, does anyone here have cousins? Me. Yep. Okay. 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 We had to pause the show to handle that little bit of business. Hi, okay, can I just interrupt for just a second? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, back in, everybody. It's my turn to talk. It's my turn to talk. Yeah. Yeah. When you talk to preschoolers, if you open up a question, everybody's going to answer and tell you stories. So questions are great if you want to hear everybody answer at once. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much for your help. Well, thanks for spending some time with us today, everyone. Bye-bye!
It's, it was, I guess it was a split, you know, I mean, it wasn't a miserable failure. If you're going to do on the preschool, you don't want to talk so much, you want to entertain sure. them. Right. Hey everyone, it's me, Wally Wackman. I'm just here, I just put on a little show. Yeah, it was fun, a little nerve-wracking, some of them were shouting out a little bit, I asked questions. Thought maybe audience participation would help, but, um, yeah, you ask a question, you get a thousand answers, and you get them all at once, so... Live and learn new uh, experiences. Thank you and no, good thank, luck to thank you. Thank you. Yeah. you know, I, I Anytime, appreciate the opportunity. If you want to come back and practice. If he honed it enough where he could come up with a storyline and have Veronica, his wife, do it with him, I think there would be something there that he could do, like, like on a weekend, just ha like one or two birthday parties, just make it like you can make a decent amount of money. The one thing that I guess has been a little roadblock is is not knowing exactly how I would fill all that time. To have the material and to be able to actually have charge of that audience, especially with only one puppet, it would be exceedingly difficult. You know, I should work harder at that. <laughs> you know, I, I want to, um, I guess, then there's just like a little fear like can I make it work will I make it work it's a fear of rejection and that sucks I feel his pain and I wanna I wanna see know what I can do to help this was and still is a passion but and and he wishes wishes that this could be full-time work however there was another part of Zach that did not want to go through life without a partner I heard about Wally on our first date he mentioned he's into the Muppets, Sesame Street, that that's the career he, path he wanted to go towards. And so he took his camera out and he showed me the pictures of Wally being made. I thought it was pretty cool. I uh, di didn't have any issues with it. I thought, how creative. A creative, successful career, specifically in puppetry, is up there. But honestly, it's still second to my family and you know, my marriage and, you know, home life, so I mean that's, you know, number one keeps me going in life. It's funny because there's like a, a seven year age difference, but we've always been like super close. He clearly took on a stronger parenting role. As a person, he's, you know, inspirational to me, even though I, I had my hand in helping form him to be uh, the person he is. That's one of the most important, uh, you know, proudest achievements in my life, honestly because he's just such a great guy and he's, you know, funny and friendly and sweet and nice. It would be great if I could dedicate more time to this. But in my reality, in my life situation, I have to work around a day job, you know? I have to pay the bills and I can't give that all up and just go, let me full on dive into everything puppetry. He loves his wife and he loves that he, he's got his, his family and, it, you know, that stuff is can be counterproductive or counterintuitive to a creative enterprise. Uh, if you if you are devoted wholly to creativity, everything else falls to the to the wayside. Instead of being pushed towards it, he just has to find it on his own, on what he wants to do, whether he wants to uh, keep it just as a uh, as a hobby or actually uh, do it as a profession. You know, we're, we're the on the spectrum that Wally would fit in his life. I don't want to give off the impression that it's not a priority to me, it is, but it's just not something I can put 100% of my energy into. After Wally developed as a character, I wanted to see what I could do at Wally in making a submission video for Sesame Street because I thought maybe that would be the next big opportunity. Hey everybody, here I am, Wally Wagman, at a really cool special place, as you can maybe see behind me, over in Astoria Studios here in Astoria, Queens. Where Sesame Street is filmed. Yep, the street. I've gone to a lot of different events and screenings and things where I've had the chance to meet a lot of the professionals who work with the Muppets and, you know, performers specifically. I don't have the balls he has to kind of just like go up to people and just start these conversations about this kind of thing. But I think it's it's awesome to see him do it. Hey! Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm Wally. I 
just, uh, it's not so much a question. I just, uh... Stand up with <laughs> hey, Oscar, I sympathize about living in a bag. I know all about that. I have, um, you know, asked about what advice to, you know, get to where they are and where to be. The answer they give him for, like, how can I get into the business is, always, is a lot of times is kind of like that formulaic, like, oh, try your best and keep doing what you're doing. And it's like, yeah, okay. Obviously, you sometimes want something more concrete to say, you know, well, here's how I did it, and this is what I would recommend. Yeah. Yeah. For a young puppet. Who's hungry, passionate? Send me a video. Send me a videotape. Okay. Now, do I do I know you? Have you done anything with us yet? Ah, uh, no. Okay. Where are you from? Uh, Bronx. Bronx, good puppeteering, nice voice. Thank so, you. So, uh, definitely, uh, get, you know, give me your information and stuff. You know? Okay. Thank you. Or hang. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's anybody on Sesame Street whose name begins with the letter Z. Oh well, can't have everything. <laughs> or maybe you can, Big Bird. You see, my name is Zach, and that begins with a Z, and I'd like to be on Sesame Street. However, I might need some help since I'm not so good at directions. Can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? Hi, my name is Zach Wallner. And the Muppets in Sesame Street have had a profound impact on my life for as long as I can remember. So I think you need to see some skills in action, and that's why I'm going to let you spend a typical day with my friend, Wally Wackerman. My name is Wally Wackerman. I'm Zach's first homemade puppet, and a real character in my own right, too. Nice to see you today. As you can see, I'm just sort of getting up, so why don't I give you a little peek at what a day in my life is really all about. Come on, let's go. Thank you so much for hearing me out, and I look forward to hearing from you, and hopefully working with you, very soon. Okay, 11.39 a.m., and I just taken by the post office, sent away on its way, hopefully to get in the hands of Kevin Clash, and he'll watch it, and we'll take it from there. Yeah. Fingers crossed for my future career and success. And then, you know, never heard any, any follow-up from it. And uh, since then, I'd, I, you know, add different things where I met performers after I'd had that completed. I tried to give people a copy of the disc, say, hey, you know, I made this. Could you take a look at it or, you know, get it where it needs to go? These people have either been doing this job for decades or they are recently on this job and they're going to be doing it for decades. And people usually accept it and we're like, oh, OK, thanks, you know, but just, you know, keep working at it. And, you know, it's, it's that sort of response. Um, but again, nothing ever came of it. I mean, it stinks because they can't really give him a different kind of answer. Should I contact my teachers who know these guys and say, can you put in a good word for me or should I just let the work speak for myself and not taint it with, you know, hey, I got connections, you know, because then I'll feel better about myself if I get selected if it wasn't because I have connections because then maybe I'll always be like, oh, I only got in because of the connections. You use the tools you, you have and I think people can tell if you're being sincere, you're being opp opportunistic and all my experiences with Zach, and it's not a few, you know, a handful of experiences, is he seems super, super sincere. Um, possibly pathologically sincere, I don't know if that's a thing. He would like to, it's kind of, I did it my way, and not on the on the um, heels of anybody else. In turn with that, it's like, are you, are you hurting yourself by not sort of getting in anyone's way? Hi, my name is Zach Wallen, and I'm a puppeteer. I want to get right down to it and introduce you to my first homemade puppet, Wally Wackerman. Take it away, Wally. Oh, hey! My name is Wally Wackerman. Like Zach said, I am his first homemade puppet. Sing a song. Um, uh, what's the name of that song? 
Wa-dee-da-dee-dum, wa-dee-da-dee-dum, what's the name of that song? I've heard it said with words and music. All right, well, I can't stay to chat. Got to go find the rest of my face. Um, anybody? Ears? Nose? Anybody? I thought those guys never leave. Now I can see what this baby's worth. Try to get a good deal on it, let's see. I think that's the best thing I'm gonna do, you know. Today, I wanted a chance to really show that I was worth it and to prove it and to get a chance and to get a chance to start at the bottom. See, hopefully it lives up to it and my editing and everything will make it pay off and happen. That's where we're at. I was just looking for the way. For whatever reason, I didn't make the cut. Yeah, and he was still very, very, you know, hurt by it. I'm wondering what, what, where did I not do what they wanted me to do? Where did I not hit the right mark? Because I, you know, I, I gave it my all, or at least I thought I did. And then sometimes, you know, when you're knocked down, it's, it's your first instinct is to, you know, pick yourself apart and criticize yourself. When I decided to send the link, share the link with people, hearing the, the positive feedback was, you know, encouraging because sometimes you lose sight in your in and of yourself of how good or talented you are because it's hard to judge from your own first person perspective. One, two, three, four. Wacky man, wacky man, does whatever a puppet can. Spins a tail and it's on, catches fans. Oh hi, I, I didn't notice that I put a camera there and press record. What can I say about Wally? Uh, so much. What can I say about Zach? Something about Wally warms the heart of everybody. It's kind of like Zach. Zach warms the heart of a lot of people. Zach is able to give the illusion of life to this inanimate object, and he's able to, through his puppeteering skills and through his acting skills, his performance skills, uh, to. to Im imbue him with a personality that's I think what puppetry is about. I know I've got a lovely purple fleecy onesie that I love to crawl into you know sometimes when I'm not feeling you know so great and just imagine what it'd be like to live inside Wally for a day. I really admire you and what you do. So even if you know you have trouble finding a way in through the traditional channels I just want you to put your head down and plow ahead. It's very different you have a craft and you use it well. Glad to know you, glad to have met you, and to have met Wally. Keep having fun, keep doing it in the right spirit, and you're sure to succeed. Keep on puppeting, puppet man. That's something. That was really great. <laughs> I did not expect that, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of stuff I need. That's that's what keeps me on this path. Sometimes people would would think, you know, looking at me, and that I haven't been active with Wally going out there and doing this and that. Think it's just a hobby. It's something I am passionate about. It's something I want to be doing as my full time career. You sort of need to know where you're going before you have a map of how to get there. Uh, so if the idea is he wants to make stuff with Wally in it. It's one step. Make stuff with Wally in it. If nobody sees it, that's disappointing. It's upsetting. If you don't get the reaction you want, all that. But the first step is to make the thing. I don't know where it's going to all go. And it's hard to say what the be-all, end-all is. I'm just going to work on making the best possible end game for both me and Wally. And that's all I can do. I know the end goal is... Is, you know, the Hensing Company, which is, I mean, I'm sure that that would be fantastic. But you got to figure out how you're going to get through the rest of it to get to the second part. Although I would love him to continue to aspire, it can't be the central focus. It's a great question. It's why I'll be watching this movie. <laughs> to know to know exactly what Zach's endgame is, what the mission is. Reaching out to an audience where I'm making them laugh and smile, making people happy and, you know, 
touching people's lives, making a difference through puppetry. The opportunity for anything is so wide, so vast. Creativity is so vast that you almost kind of need to start to find a narrower focus. I would, I have encouraged him to start to think about a career in something else that could be solid and be, and still incorporate potentially puppeteering within it. Growing up, I liked uh, the, the Muppets and Sesame Street and it meant a lot to me. And then, you know, I kind of started to realize a little bit later on in life that that's what I want to do with my life. I'd like to be with those guys and that sort of stuff and doing this as my job, my career, my passion. You know, we all have passions, right? Do you guys all have stuff that you want to do with your life? The stuff that matters to you that most? I do. Oh, of course we all do. So this is something that came to me because of how much I cared about Muppets and puppetry. I'm a special educator and I work only with children from birth to five, which is his target audience as well. And he has gone with me on many, many visits to children's homes. I think he would be excellent. I always like to, you know, have chances to share this world with people, you know, who may not be as exposed to it, may not be as knowledgeable about it, and especially, you know, if it, it's something they really get into. Where are they all from? Where do they live? Sesame Street. Sesame Street. That's right. These are the various Sesame Street Muppets. So let me point to them and see if you can get them. Who's this big yellow one? Big Bird. Oh, I said big. I kind of gave it away, didn't I? Telly and Snuffleupagus are performed by the same person. These puppets are wonderful characters and all but there's always a person behind it. You have to be the one to give them life because without you, there's no life in it. You want your audience to believe that this thing on your hand is alive. Well, it's not quite a sock puppet. It's, it's a hand puppet or a glove puppet. So look, he's gonna wave hi. 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 Puppetry is all about movement. If you have them talk, you gotta get the voice in, but it's a really a movement-based art. So look, he can wave hi with this hand, wave hi with this hand, put his hands together. You can think a little, hmm. Our hands are like the most essential tools if you want to do puppetry. All right, looking very good. And then you move your thumb up and down. Try to keep the top part flat. When we talk, our lower jaw is the one that does the moving. Your head doesn't go backwards. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Sometimes people, they put on a puppet and they go, hey, I'm talking like this. Hey, this is That would mean our heads are going, yeah, yeah. And that would not be comfortable or natural. So this is a live feed from this camera to that monitor. Try to keep your arm up straight like this. So do this, just keep your body like this. Come over here, open the mouth with a thumb. Don't have the head go back. Oh, oh no, I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you all for being such a great class. You put eyes on that as a puppet. That was my parents, that was their careers. Yeah, you know, over the years it's crossed my mind and I'm sure my mom would love it. I just don't know that that's what I'm meant to do. You know, I want to reach the world, but being in a classroom and having to manage that, I don't think that's really my path. I don't need the end of this documentary be like, okay, I've made it now and then, you know, people could find out about me on my successful career path. Yeah, it's the story of me, but I'm just, I'm a representative of anyone who's passionate about something and wants to go for it. Every puppet has a human. All along, this has been the story of one human and his passion to create life. It is this passion to which Zach devotes himself completely. It is this passion Zach has fulfilled. I've sort of had him speak that puppets are immortal, but in a way they can be, as long as there's a voice and there's movement. I don't think I could ever fully trust an outsider. But maybe if I had a son, uh, you know, or a daughter, you know, <laughs> you know maybe if, if I got a child that was interested enough to pick up where I left off and either of them, you know, felt like giving Molly life anew was something worthwhile for them, 
then I think that might be the only way I'd want him to continue. While his rise as a puppeteer continues, it will always be his family that makes the man in Wacky Man. Bye. It's like that classic inspiring song goes. He's going to kick you a straight face. I was going to say, you know, you know, I get knocked down, but I get up again. <laughs> You're never going to keep me down. <laughs> In the words of Chumbawamba. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really find inspiration from them, though the song's words are salient. <laughs> Wally's first Christmas. Twas a night before Christmas and all was asleep, except for a young puppet who was having a weep. I've never had any Christmas cheer, for the Z Grinch has locked me in my bag alone here. Twas true the Z Grinch was a fearsome sight, and he made up with meanness what he lacked in height. You'll never see Christmas as long as I'm here. So you better get used to your bag full of tears. But Wally was hopeful and he dried his eyes and he prayed to Jim Henson that he might get a surprise. And just at that second the bag flew open and a voice said, G'day, I'm Hugh Jackman. Now quit your moping. I'll take you now to a land down under and we'll have a hot Christmas in the land of wonder. Wally had a blast in that magical land he had so much fun on Hugh's well-muscled hands. And what of the Z Grinch? Did he learn his lesson? Well, maybe he will, if we all send him our blessings. See you later. Bye.